Welcome to GovCast, connecting with federal IT's top decision makers. I'm Alexander Bolova, production lead at GovCIO Media and Research. With me today is Editor-in-Chief, Amy Kluber. Hi, Amy. Hello. You had the opportunity to chat with Greg Smith, CEO of the Technology Advancement Center. My first question for you is, what is the Technology Advancement Center? Super interesting organization. They just rebranded. So I caught up with him to see what's going on. And they're basically a nonprofit. They're an accelerator of technology. They partner with different organizations to bring technology into the Defense Department. Uh, That's very difficult to do at speed. So organizations like his are important in getting that innovation in the door much more quickly. TAC does a lot of teaching for small companies. So teaching them how to work with the Defense Department, which is not easy. He uh, gives them all the ins and outs. They do a lot of recruiting and events for STEM purposes. So getting the next generation of technologists in the door and wanting to even do this for a job. So a lot of very important things for their mission. And I just think it was a very fascinating conversation, especially with everything that's happening in cybersecurity. Though he did mention it's not just about cybersecurity, it's about technology as well, which is part of their rebrand. Yeah, very interesting. So tell me a little bit more about Greg Smith. Greg is such a longstanding veteran in technology. He's led so many companies who have done this work for the DOD. So he kind of understands the ins and outs of how to get this done. So is there anything that you want to highlight before we listen to your conversation? I think the way he talks about cybersecurity is very interesting because he has that mindset of the commercial sector and bringing that technology into the door, which is very critical and needed for DOD at large. So he has a very different way of thinking about things that I think is refreshing in the defense landscape. Well, let's not keep our listeners waiting. Let's take a listen to your conversation. Welcome to GovCast. I'm Amy Kluber, and I'm here with Greg Smith, CEO of the Technology Advancement Center, formerly known as MISI. So welcome, Greg. Nice to have you on the show. Amy, thanks so much for having us. So starting off with some big news for your organization, going through a little bit of a rebrand. So tell us all about the Technology Advancement Center and what led you there. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, You know, the Technology Advancement Center is, as you mentioned, a new brand for us. Uh, Previously, we were called MISI or the Maryland Innovation and Security Institute. Um, When I arrived earlier this year, you know, as I started to think about the name and the brand, I felt that the organization has grown enough in the past five years that we needed to get a new look and feel. And there were a few reasons for that. Uh, One of the reasons is that when we were going to other states, the name Maryland always had a negative effect. So as we've started to see the Department of Defense expand their wings and do more things uh, around the United States from a cyber standpoint, I felt that we needed to be Uh, more agnostic. So that was one of the reasons. Um, The second reason is that I didn't necessarily want to be tied to security. And while we are a phenomenal cybersecurity organization, uh, we do a lot of other things from a technological standpoint. And and I felt that we just needed to make our name a little bit more generic uh, so we could broaden our wings as well. Makes a lot of sense. Um, So your facilities are based right there in Maryland, but um, I know you considering cyberspace and the technology domain, you know, that stretches way outside the state. I've actually visited the Dreamport facility before. Super cool place. Many events that you guys host there, hackathons, et cetera. I think it's a a really cool environment for what you're trying to do with uh, evangelizing and educating um, everybody on how to solve some of the national security challenges. You actually have a long tenure across cyber and technology leadership. So talk through how you've seen cybersecurity evolve over that time. Uh, Yeah, you could say it's definitely a a long career. 
<laughs> you know, I, I think what's happening is, you know, in the early days when I got involved with cyber, it really wasn't talked about. It wasn't mainstream media. It wasn't in the newspaper every day or online. And, you know, I think what we have seen is that it really has become the new domain uh, from a military standpoint, from a privacy standpoint. It really started, it has grown so much that it spanned so many different domains. You know, across those, across the decade plus that I've been involved with it, you can look at the amount of um, venture capital funding, the amount of companies that have gone public. And unfortunately, it's out of necessity, right? It, it is, um, you know, it's a phenomenally interesting market, but it's an unfortunate market all at the same time. And, you know, I think that what we're seeing now with our adversaries is they're using cyber significantly more than they're using traditional military mechanisms, you know, whether it's uh, on the ground or an airplane or under the water. And and I don't think that it's going to change anytime soon, unfortunately, but but it is a fascinating industry and it's unfortunately going to continue to evolve and grow. That's definitely right. Um, we see all the time uh, foreign adversaries using cyberspace to their advantage. You know, they might not be the military superpower but they use the cyberspace domain in ways that previously we didn't really see before, especially with cryptocurrency, the rise of technology. So it's really interesting to follow some of those developments. For you, what are some of the biggest cybersecurity priorities that you're helping the national security tackle? And um, how are you seeing these impact the federal government and defense? Yeah, you know, we really have three different pillars. The first pillar is focused on small business and academic engagement. And we have to think that the innovators for solving some of these nation state problems are coming from small companies. So it's our goal here to get them exposure to the Department of Defense and other agencies. And it's our goal to nurture them along to help them on their entrepreneurial or, or academic journey. The second area that we're very focused on, which I think is probably the most important uh, mission that we have, is how do we get kids interested in STEM education and cybersecurity, but also how do we train both college students at the community college as well as the four-year and beyond academic level to get interested in cybersecurity? And then also, how do we train our military to get better in cybersecurity? So, you know, I think that, that the skills gap and the job uh, gap that we have in the country right now, I think there's 3.5 million jo open jobs in cybersecurity, is something that we can really help accelerate. And we're working on numerous programs. And as you mentioned earlier, you know, our hackathons are great uh, recruiting events for the government. You know, so when we're hosting, you know, whether it's 20 colleges here, or 20 college teams here, or 65 remotely, you know, it is a prime hunting ground for the government to come into our facility, talk to the kids about what they do in their daily jobs, and get them excited. And, you know, it's very rewarding for our organization to see a line of kids go up to one of the government agencies because they're interested in a career and it, based on what they do. Fantastic. I, I know that's such a big challenge right now in the industry at large regarding not just the cybersecurity workforce, but a technical workforce and getting people and young kids into those STEM careers. So how do you see the industry overcoming this challenge as it continues to modernize? Yeah, I think the key thing is that we need to start very early in the educational cycle to get kids thinking about these type of careers and and trying to you know take the key kids that have an interest and foster that throughout their primary school and you know the beautiful thing about cybersecurity is that it doesn't have to be the best or the brightest student it doesn't have to be the best student that's great at math right? We need all types of jobs in our cybersecurity workforce. 
We need great writers that can write technical documents. We can utilize people on the spectrum that think a little bit differently, that might think like our adversary and are, are very creative in different ways than a, you know, a, another student might be. And I think we have to foster that early, like third and fourth grade. So we host Cyber Saturdays here for those kids where we do fun events that get them thinking about things, you know, that they might go back and start questioning their parents on why do they have this television or do they know that their ring doorbell might be vulnerable. And hopefully that'll start to foster it. And now what I'm seeing in the high school world is opportunities for kids to start, you know, doing more advanced computer learning and also doing cybersecurity and taking certifications. So, you know, I think we have to invest early and we're going to see big results down the road. Absolutely. What role do you see organizations like yours playing across the broader defense community, not just in getting the next generation into this field, but also overcoming things like the valley of death that we hear so often in the Defense Department for technology? Well, I think we all know that a lot of technology gets bought and gets wasted, right? You know, from our focus is let's look at the challenges and the problems that the Department of Defense has, and let's try to find solutions that fit the need. If we find something the way we think about it is, you know, and we look at technology, let's have that company fail fast. Let's see if it meets some of the needs and then we can invest more to build out some of the features that the customer might want. Or let's find that technology that the, you know, the government has the ability to do a quick acquisition with. You know, based on what we do here, we are myopically focused on reaching out to that ecosystem, finding some companies that might might solve the problem, vetting those companies, and then showcasing them to that particular customer with the hopes that, you know, it solves the mission need. Absolutely. I know the Defense Department speaks so often on how important those partnerships are, especially in the context of technology innovation. And right now, the government faces executive orders around things like zero trust and AI, and we're seeing all the the plans around that across government. How do you see organizations like yours making a difference around this work in particular? Well, we've been very fortunate that we've been working on zero trust technologies for quite some time here. You know, AI is an interesting one that we're just now starting to get involved with. You know, there's a lot of the regulators today are trying to figure out how to regulate AI, as is the Department of Defense. And and I, I think there's phenomenal uses for AI, and I think there's some scary uses for AI. And I think, you know, like any organization, as new technologies come out, we as sort of the bleeding edge of looking at tech have to get involved with those companies. And, and we're bringing some of those companies right in right now to help us understand better the, the capabilities. So, you know, we're going to continue to play in that vein very assertively to meet the needs of the mission. And the mission is always evolving. Absolutely. I do want to add if I could, could I could I come back to that one comment that you talked about the the need for partnerships? Absolutely. I think it's I think it's I think partnerships are so vital today. When you think about the FARs and some of the regulations that are required to make a purchase, you need to have organizations like mine, like the Technology Advancement Center, that that has the ability to move very quickly. In cyberspace, things happen in a moment's notice and all of a sudden there's something new. And if the government had to procure something through a FAR-based vehicle, it would take a year. By that time, that exploit could have already compromised the entire supply chain or you know, an entire city. So if we don't have vehicles that allow organizations to move very quickly, to do things in a very fast and efficient manner, we're going to be in a world of hurt against our adversaries. So we we need to keep those partnerships moving forward to be successful and to keep our country safe. So how do you see organizations like TAC 
kind of helping along some of that acquisition modernization that is necessary for modernization like this? Yeah, I, I, I think that, it, you know, under the DOD instructions, uh, there are vehicles, whether it's an OTA or a PIA, that allow companies to move very, very quickly. And from a technology standpoint, but especially in the cybersphere, you have to move very fast. So I, I think that we need to continue to maybe monitor the rules and make sure that the rules are not abused. But I think that there needs to be acquisition vehicles that allows a command to move instantaneously based on a threat, a threat environment that's so global in nature today. Absolutely. So what are you looking forward to in the coming year? Anything that you're immediately tackling under the, the rebrand? What's next? Well, again, I think we're going to do a lot more uh, training in the coming year. Um, as I mentioned, workforce development is something that we do uh, every day here, and it's a big passion of mine to try to fill that skill set gap that we have in the United States. I love fostering innovation from small businesses because I've run a number of small businesses in the past, and I know how hard it is to break into the federal government. And the thing that I, I really enjoy because I've been a product CEO for so long is I love some of the innovation work that we do. And we're going to expand that innovation work here as well. Well, Greg, thanks for chatting with me on getting a look at some of these priorities that you're facing and, and how the organization's really fitting into the broader defense community. So thank you. Well, Amy, thanks so much for having us and appreciate your time. Thank you, Amy. That was a great interview with Greg Smith. Before we let our listeners go, do you have any last highlights or takeaways that you want to leave them with? I think it's going to be very interesting, especially since they work so much with the U.S. Cyber Command to see how much the command starts to adopt a lot more innovation and commercialization of tech. So that's something I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on as uh, the group kind of evolves and sees their rebrand through. And one last question. We are recording this the week of Thanksgiving, and I believe is publishing the week of Thanksgiving as well. So, Amy, what are you grateful for? I'm so grateful for the remoteness that we're able to do these efforts with. So, Greg, they're based out of Maryland, which is, you know, not too far in the DMV area for me, but it kind of is far. It would have been impossible to coordinate a time to do this podcast interview in person. So, although it might be controversial, I'm thankful for Teams and Zoom, especially Zoom. Wow, a compliment for Teams, even if it's getting second place to Zoom. That is a... <laughs> Wow, that that's a first here at GovSAO Media and Research. Not to say that we don't love our uh, <laughs> our Outlook suite, but we use it every day. Yes, we do. And I'm grateful for slippers. Um, it gets chilly in the winter, and slippers are the perfect thing. Uh, anyways, that is all for today's GovCast. Listeners can tune in next week for a brand new episode. But until then, if you like what you heard, make sure you subscribe and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice. I'm Alexander Bolova. I'm Amy Kluber. Thank you for listening. GovCast, along with HealthCast and CyberCast, is a production of GovCIO Media and Research. For more podcasts and to check out the other shows, head to govciomedia.com. Watch out for new episodes released every Tuesday and Wednesday across our shows. You can follow all of them on your favorite podcast platform. And if you like what you heard, make sure to let us know by leaving a review. And if you have any topics you think we should look into, contact us at newsletter at govcio.com. <laughs>